Hi, quick note about this video. Headphones are a must. If you want to get the most out of this video, you really need to have a good set of headphones on. If you don't have a pair of headphones on, go put this video on pause, go grab them, come right back. Hi everybody, my name is Dan McGuire. I am the Director of Percussion for Science Hill High School, as well as the President for the Tennessee Chapter of the Percussive Arts Society. On this video, uh, we're going to be talking about blend and balance. This is the first video in a two-video series. On today's video, we're going to be specifically talking about the two main types of balancing, uh, some things to consider, and how to execute those. For uh, examples, we're going to have some clips of my ensemble at Science Hill used just to illustrate some of the different concepts that we cover in today's video. For balance. We're going to be talking about two main types of balancing, the first of which is pyramid balancing. So I want you to imagine a triangle, and uh, on the bottom third you have loud lows, in the middle third mid middles, and for the top third soft highs. Now this includes pitched and non-pitched instruments in this conversation. So what we're thinking about is, you know, frequency, um, what type of octave these things sit in in regards to high, mid, and low. So for the low end, you're talking about uh, the low end of a marimba, concert bass drum. For the mids, you're talking about the mid-range of a vibraphone, a marimba, those types of wood instruments. And for the highs, we're thinking uh, instruments like your typical metallics, um, bells, crotales, chimes, uh, again, depending on octave, as well as the upper end of the marimba and the vibraphone. Um, crash cymbals will fall into this, suspended cymbals, so forth and so on. So it's, it's really about the frequency and, and where it sits within that um, aural palette that comes across to the listener. So for our first example, uh, we're going to be listening to a recording of Lieber Tango, arranged by John Parks IV from Florida State University. And what you'll hear on this, at the, the melody sits on top, as it should. And then underneath, if you listen to the accompaniment underneath, you're going to hear that bass marimba um, that, that you'll see on the right-hand side of your screen uh, be just a little bit more present than the other voices within that accompaniment. And it, it, it stays that way. That's that pyramid balancing where the melody sits on top and then the other instruments then within the accompaniment are uh, come across with volume according to that pyramid balancing based upon their pitch. Here we go. of balancing is column balancing. And on this, it, it's, it's rather self-explanatory. You just imagine a column straight up and down, um, no bulges on either side, just um, par two parallel lines. And this is how everything sits. We still have the same concept of lows, mids, and highs as they relate to frequency. Um, but everything presents at about the same volume. Now, it's really important to note that Column balancing is not about everyone playing the same dynamic. It is about the same output. Dynamics are inherently relative, which is a whole other conversation for another video. But you have to take into account the characteristics of every instrument within that ensemble. Woods project differently than metals. The low end of a vibraphone or the low end of a bell kit um, projects differently than a pair of crash cymbals, as well as each instrument within your ensemble having its own quirks and tendencies. All of those things have to come into account when you're talking about column balancing. And so the idea is that everything coming out is at about the same level. That does not mean that everyone's playing the same dynamic as it relates to them as a player. So 
For this, we are going to uh, be watching um, a, a, a small clip of Shades of Glass by Dustin Schultz. Excellent piece of music. And uh, for this, we're, we're listening to that column balancing. And the idea is that I can hear every single voice, and it's sitting around the same level uh, once, once we kind of get going. You've got the melodic line on top where every, all the instruments that are playing that melodic line are uh, similar dynamics. And then you've got all the accompaniment, accompaniment underneath that is also sitting at a similar dynamic range uh, within itself. So these concepts that uh, we cover today, pyramid balancing and column balancing, it is really a matter of taste. Some people prefer pyramid balancing, some people prefer column balancing. In my personal opinion, I think the music will dictate it. Uh, the different pieces of music that we used to illustrate today lend themselves, in my opinion, to different types of balancing. Shades of glass, if you use uh, pyramid balancing, it can make it sound pretty muddy. Uh, and you don't necessarily get all the voices the way that you need to with a, a piece uh, written in that style. But uh, by all means, feel free to develop your own taste and what you like and what you don't like. And really just make the music yours like we do with everything else. Really important concept. Make sure the kids understand how to do this. Make sure that the students know what these different types of balance and blend are and what they sound like. We have to train their ears just like we train them with uh, vertical alignment and dynamic contrast and getting the students to take ownership of this blend and balance concept is really what's going to let your ensemble uh, achieve with these different concepts. As always, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at my email. And if you have not yet done so, check out that PAS YouTube channel. Got some really good content on there. Really especially check out the PAS Classroom. Uh, some great content on those pages. Until next time, take care.